Hey everybody, what's up? Hope you're doing well this evening. And today we're going to talk about something really cool and something that is uh, somewhat elusive in the world of metal and guitar playing and music in general. So we're going to watch something that was posted on social media earlier today. And uh, I want to see what everybody's reaction is to it in the comments. Let's check this out real quick. What is it? What could we toss, possibly be talking about? Well, there's our friend Christian Munzner playing some guitar. Let's check out what he's playing. We all know what that is. Now, hopefully, that's familiar to anybody that's ever heard of the band Necrophagist. Yes, everything has been talked about, about how there's not going to be another album. Muhammad's been seen, what, like twice at the grocery store and at a festival or two in the last 20 or 14 years, whatever it's been, since Epitaph was released. And that's why it's interesting. Because if you look on... Google and check it out. Epitaph was released in 2004. What does that mean? It's been 20 years since that album's release. So in my opinion, what's going on here is I think that there's going to be some sort of necrophagist release from Christian. And also in the video, uh, Justin Hombach from Eternity's End, uh, who plays in that band with Christian, was also in the studio. And I wonder if there's going to be some sort of thing where Justin may play one guitar, Christian will play the other, and we may see Hannes on the drums, considering that Hannes Grossman just did that track uh, that was supposed to be a throwback to Necrophagist, and it was, you know, fan service, which was awesome, in my opinion. So I don't think it's too far of a stretch to think that something's going to happen. I'm not saying that Muhammad's going to appear out of thin air. And we're going to have a reunion. Everybody's going to be friends. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is this. I think I understand. And I think I know why there hasn't been a new album. Now, this is probably old news to most people. It's somewhat old news to me. And I think I can connect these dots myself without having to know this. But I think there's been some evidence out there of actually what's going on this whole time. And let's take a look at what that evidence is. Now, obviously, it was reported that Muhammad said that he had another album ready to go. And let's check that out. So here is Muhammad talking about um, the new album. Straight from the horse's mouth. Happy about this. Cool, cool. I heard you guys uh, recorded some new material. Is that true? No, I'm, I'm writing new material at my next record. So we hope for a release date in summer 2007, and uh, we hope to release it on a different label. Are you guys done with Relapse? Legally, no. <laughs> but personally, I'm done with Relapse big time. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, uh, I just wanted to ask, you know, like, how did you get into metal music? Okay, then there comes the standard question of how did you get into metal? But anyway, right there, Relapse. There's a problem with the record label. And there's more than one piece of evidence that suggests that. And it's from the same interview, so let's check that out real quick. Here we go. Let me get that right here. All right, here it is. Now, Muhammad's going to talk about Relapse, the record label, again. This is your first tour of the U.S. You, know, you guys played some festivals, but how has it been touring the U.S.? How has the crowd respond? Well, I would say the best so far for Necrophage is worldwide. I mean, what worldwide means like Europe and the U.S. If I compare both, uh, we have a good response in Europe too, but this is amazing. This is incredible. We didn't expect this because... Uh, First thing is we've been told by our label Relapse Records that uh, it's no good idea to come over here because uh, they do not believe in us having a market over here, which we were like, okay, they, we got brainwashed like over a year. And um, basically we were not supposed to do this tour, but 
it's doing it's doing very good. We sold out places like San Francisco. We sold out Japan with 600 people. I think that says everything, bro. I think people want to see Necrophages. Uh, it's just the fact that we didn't believe it to happen because we got brainwashed by our label. So basically, there's uh, no tour support, nothing, because they said like the tour is not gonna help the band. It's not gonna help the label. It's not gonna help nothing. But we see like the total opposite oh, yeah. so this is like the, how the business works we're happy to be here we made it here we pay everything ourselves that's how our label is so the american fans are one of our fucking best man. it's awesome yeah you know I've just... so right there right there no tour support they didn't want them to come over here they paid for it themselves the album is com is done or he was alluding to it being done as they wanted a release date in uh, 2007 so that being said I think it's pretty safe to assume that we got some John Fogarty Credence Clearwater revival stuff going on here where maybe Muhammad can't release music because he's contractu contractually obligated not to if he does not satisfy the agreement that he made with Relapse and maybe in his stubbornness he's refusing to give them what they want because of the principle involved. It's about the principalities as they say. So it's interesting to see all that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there probably will be like a anniversary reissue or something like that. Or maybe Christian's planning something um, around the anniversary of the album. You know, 20 years is a really long time. I mean, 2004, that's crazy. 20 years ago, that album was released. And it's been one of the best death metal albums of all time. One of the best metal albums of all time. And highly influential I would say it's been influential to the point of making it like influential like on a Slayer status or an Iron Maiden kind of level too. Or even Ozzy where it's just one of those all-time great albums that people uh, still revere and still like. But that being said, let's go ahead and listen to Stab Wound and Christian Solo specifically. Um, you know, Christian out there killing it still has that unfortunate condition of focal dystonia. You can see that he wears that glove. And in the interview that I did with Christian where he stopped by the podcast, we talked about that a little bit. We mostly talked about his main projects and being his newer projects like Obscura, which is one of the greatest bands too, on this level as well. You know, Eternity's End, um, the uh, Jazz Fusion album he did with Danny Tucker. All that stuff's really great. You know, the new Alkaloid record was super good too. So, and obviously Obscura tours like crazy. They're killing it. So let's just rewind the clock. 20 years and check out Christian Solo from Stab Wound. He's playing it now just as good as he played it then. Super melodic. Classic. How can you not listen to that part? Seriously, an awesome hook for a death metal tune. But anyway, I hope my tinfoil hat does not fall off my head. But I really think that we're going to have some sort of release around the uh, release date of Epitaph, which is August 3rd, 2004. And I think it's cool that Christian's going to do that. Um, just speculation, of course. But that seems like it may be something where there's going to be either maybe like an official tab book for those solos or there's going to be maybe what would be really rad is if they did the left to die thing or living monstrosity thing where they toured and played music from, you know, the band that they were in just kind of like, uh, you know, um, living monstrosity had James Murphy, uh, Gus Rios, uh, freaking Terry Butler, who both James and Terry were on spiritual healing. And that's why they named their, their project living monstrosity. And then they had the dude from exhumed on there playing and singing and uh, playing guitar and singing as well. And just like left to die is the same thing. But you've got Terry and Rick Ross, and Rick's an awesome guitar player as well. So maybe that's what we're going to see is some. So maybe they're going to play some shows at some festivals. Who knows? You know the demand for it's there, and I think it's really cool that maybe this potentially could, you know, rattle the rattle the cage of Muhammad, and we might hear from him, or there might be some sort of you know musical release, or maybe there might be some litigation. You know, who knows what's going to happen? 
but I really think that's what's keeping Necrophages from releasing new music is it's just a battle of wills between Muhammad and Relapse Records. You know, it's you know that interview he said it himself. They didn't want him to come to the states. They were, you know, in his opinion, successful. They paid for it themselves. Maybe it was a breach of contract thing. You know, we don't know who the booking agent was or who his book, if he was signed to a booking agency or they specifically, you know, contract to somebody, you know, in the States like um, TKO or Continental or anywhere or in Europe, maybe it was the Flaming Arts. But it seems like this is a problem that had to do with them, with Necrophages coming to America on that tour. And maybe, um, you know, like that album's done, but we won't hear it because there's like a clause. Maybe there's a clause where it says after so long, it'll uh, expire. But who knows? Maybe maybe if they do a reissue in 2004, that since it's another release, maybe that contract will be satisfied. And then we'll get to hear the new album at a different time. And I, would, I speculate that because maybe that's why we haven't had this album under a different name is because maybe there's some sort of, you know, John Fogarty stuff where he couldn't even play his own songs. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the VH1 behind the music thing, but, you know, it's a real deal for John. He couldn't even, you know, play the songs that he wrote because they sounded like him. But, you know, if you sign a bad record deal or a bad business agreement, that's what happens because this is business. This is not just art, unfortunately. This is business. And if there's a, you know, money to be made, that's why these bands are getting signed because they made good music and they labels knew they could make money off of it. And that ultimately is what we're at. I would not suggest con trying to contact these people in their personal lives or go harass them at work, which I think was pretty freaking lame. But, you know, hopefully we'll see something in on August 3rd of 2004. Maybe we'll see something happen. Hopefully we'll, in the least, which is more than enough, get something from Christian. I'm sure that we will. It's obviously, he's obvious he's working on it right now. So who knows what's going to happen, but I thought that was interesting um, once again, thank you guys for supporting the channel, liking and subscribing. I want to see all the comments about your guys' crazy necrophages conspiracy theories or what you think about this and that. Always cool to read those comments and respond. Helps keep the conversation going. Um, I, as a, once again, I have that mini tour next week starting on Wednesday in Southern California in San Diego with Brian DeLeonis. We're doing the Pacific Shred Invasion. I'm going to be performing at NAM Saturday. Uh, at NAM, obviously at the Siggy Braun booth at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're around, stop by and uh, it'd be cool to uh, talk about guitars and metal. You guys have an awesome rest of your night. Right on.